Um, so thank you very much for having me this afternoon. Um, you've got me for the next half an hour, um, but don't worry, I'm not going to talk at you for that long. So a little bit more interactivity just for the last sort of part of the session this afternoon. So, um, quicker, that would help. No, okay. Who am I? So my name's Laura. Um, I'm a band six um, pelvic health physio. It sounds very exciting to say that as I only started this job a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I um, originally um, started out as a therapy support worker. Um, that's what we call them in my trust. Um, I then did my master's um, in physiotherapy at the University of Southampton, which I finished in 2022. I then um, did my um, junior rotations at Oxford, where I worked in stroke, um, adult intensive care, general medicine, chronic pelvic pain, which I then did twice. And as I said, now I've got a band six job in pelvic health. Um, over my time um, within physiotherapy, I've been involved in the CSP in a number of different ways. So this afternoon, I've just been asked to share um, a few of those experiences, so how the CSP have helped me to get to where I am now. But also for you as student members, how you can start getting involved at this point. Now, I'm sure that because so many of you are here and online, I'm already talking to the converted. But it's really important to think about how we can share this with your peers, but also think about some of those other opportunities that you might not be aware of exist until today. So, how have I utilised these CSP networks? So, in 2020, when I started my Physio Masters, um, I joined the CSP as a student member. Um, and then a little bit later into that, I became the CSP rep for my university. And this was my first real insight into what the CSP actually does as both the educational body and the trade union side of things. I joined mostly because somebody came to uni and told me that I should. I didn't really know what they did at that point, but I'm so glad that I did. Um, later into that year and into the next, with the conferences like this, but with the COVID times, they were all online. Um, I volunteered as a student volunteer, um, which meant that I got to attend the conference, take part in some of the networking sessions, and, and start to, again, see the breadth of the physiotherapy profession. Oh, I forgot to do my clicker. Here's my animations. Um, so moving on to point three. Um, in my second and um, my final year of university, I did one of the leadership and management placements that we've already talked about this afternoon, but I did that with the CSP. Um, I worked with people from across the organisation to look at how um, we can help students to understand the role of support workers and develop some educational resources that are hopefully sort of finding their way into your university curriculums. I also then joined um, the CSP's, one of the regional networks, the South Central Regional Network, because that's where I, I live. Um, I joined that as a student committee member. Again, just starting to find out a little bit more what goes on behind the scenes. I then graduated, change of picture, um, and I upgraded to my full chartered membership um, through the uh, graduate affiliate membership as well. And I continued with that role in the South Central Regional Network. I then became a workplace steward, so a, a, a rep, um, and started to learn a bit more about the trade union side of the organization as well. Um, this is a role that um, it, it's, it's been particularly impactful for me, I think, um, helping my colleagues, both the registered members of staff and the non-registered ones, to get more from workplaces um, to make sure that we're, we're doing what we should as the physiotherapy profession and striving for things moving forwards. Um, I also then joined one of the professional networks, the Pelvic Obstetric and Gynecological Physiotherapy Network, um, because of my interest in pelvic health. And then um, in this year, um, I then was awarded one of their bursaries, the Dame Josephine Barnes um, bursary, which meant that I could start to attend some of their um, clinical events to, to develop my clinical skills as well. So hopefully you can see that I've sort of touched on a number of different pillars of practice just purely through my roles and experiences within the CSP itself. Okay. In amongst all of this, there have been a number of other key moments. 
So using things like the library services in my dissertation and in some research that I've done recently, I'm actually presenting here tomorrow. I've attended a number of the conferences, a number of CPD webinars and things that have been put on. Um, I have ADHD, so I'm a member of some of the diversity networks, and I think some of the tables have got some more information about some of those networks as well. Um, I've written some frontline magazines, been interviewed for some of those, so I've appeared in there, very active on social media. I know some of you have already come and said hello to me. Um, and I've already talked about some of the other things. So more clinical-wise, we've got um, clinical network, WhatsApp groups, bursaries, courses, things to develop that way as well. But enough about me. This is, this is about you. So when we think about networking, obviously a number of you are here in person, but we've also got some of our colleagues online as well. And, and I just want to, to give you some little words of advice for how to start thinking about networking as a student, because it's really, really important for the rest of your careers. And if you're anything like me, I find it really difficult to go up and talk to strangers, to small talk with people, to try and insert myself into conversations. Um, so I've, in one of my next slides, I've got a... a bullet point that says my, my thing that I try and say to myself in any of these sorts of situations is by the end of the day I want to have spoken to three people that I didn't know before I came here. It doesn't matter who they are but that's my challenge to myself so that's, that's my number one tip to you at the moment um, and we're going to come back to that later. But it's things that we're all good at as physiotherapists, being approachable, being friendly, active listening, all of those skills that, again, throughout the rest of the day we've heard are so valuable as physiotherapists. But it's then the other things, so following up after that interaction. Can you ask them for their contact details, or can you give them a way to contact you to make sure that you're staying connected? You want to attend sessions and, and workshops, if it's in person in particular, so that you're, um, again, getting a wide range of experiences and, and things that you're um, thinking about. But there's some other things like being respectful of people's time. If you can see somebody's rushing to get a coffee or running to the toilet, maybe that isn't the right moment to, to go up to them and say, hi, my name's Laura, can I talk to you for the next few minutes? If we're thinking more online, it's about choosing the right platforms um, for whatever you want that interaction to be, whether that's a CSP platform or social media, whatever it might be. And again, maybe more social media-wise, but following the right accounts, getting your name out to the people that you want to, to network with and finding out what they're doing in the world that you want to be involved in. Again, active engagement. You can't just passively sort of float along. Um, it does take a bit of confidence to, to go and put yourself out there. But staying professional is particularly important online, um, as obviously things stay, stay online when it gets out. And, and also, if you don't ask, you don't get. And I think that's really important to, to take away. But coming back to the CSPs, things a little bit more specifically, and I know we've had a very similar slide to this earlier, but there's just a couple of things that I want to pick out um, that might be things you haven't come across yet as a student member. Um, things like the mentorship platform, I don't know if you knew that existed, where um, people that are much further down the line in their careers are offering you the opportunity to, to chat to them for some coaching, to, to find out how they got to where they are so that you might be able to emulate that. Um, maybe more clinically wise, we've got the ICSP forums, the interactive CSP forums, where you can post clinical questions, mentorship questions, things to other um, clinicians um, that are maybe working in particular areas that you want to find a little bit more out about. Um, there's bursaries and financial awards. Um, this might be for things like attending conferences and events, but it might be for research or to go and study abroad or to do some work abroad as well. And then we've got all the array of professional networks and regional networks that we've spent a little bit of time talking about today as well. So, over to you. The blue bit is my thing that I've already said, finding... Um, those three people that you, you didn't know before you were here today. And you might have already started to do some of that, so if you have, well done you. But 
there should be more post-it notes floating around on your tables. And I just want you to spend two or three minutes thinking about these three points. Everybody in this room is, is coming today with their own experiences, backgrounds, different points in their careers. And regardless of whether you're a student or not, I just want you to spend a moment thinking about one thing that you'd like some help with in your career or, or your studies, one way that you might be able to help somebody else in their career or studies, and then any contact details that you might be happy to share um, with, with somebody else. And then once you've had a think about that, written it down on post-it notes, I'm going to ask you to move around, if you're able to, to try and find at least one person that you haven't spoken yet today. Um, but I'm going to come back in a second to tell you a bit more about that. So two minutes to have a think about those questions. So I just need to be microphone ready. Yeah. Okay, that's fabulous. And I'll wave it at you if you look like you're average. You're not stopping every time. That's fine. Okay, so hopefully I'm not interrupting too much and you've, you've had a bit of a chance to think about those things for those post-it notes. If I can now ask in the room, if anybody is a CSP member of staff, is on one of the networks, is any way, shape or form in that realm, can you stick your hand up and give it a good wave for me? So everybody else look around. These are the people, the CSP people. Perfect, thank you. Pop them back down. Now, if you're a student, can you give me a wave? So these are your fellow students, most of you in the room. Perfect. And now if you're someone else, so maybe you're a registered professional, uni lecturer, support worker, any of those sort of domains. Perfect. So we've got about 15 minutes. If you're happy to get up and move around, feel free. If you're already on a table where you don't know other people, great, stay where you are. But see if you can find at least one person that maybe is one of those different groups to you as well. That would be great. And here's your opportunity to do some of that networking, put some of that into practice. <laughs> 